You're welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT Podcast. We got a jam packed special one for y'all tonight. How y'all doing, fellas? Good. Good, bro. Good. You good? For real? Because a few minutes ago, you, you was ready to pop off. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yo, I'm, I'm trying to do what the pivot does, bro. I'm trying to see where you're at mentally. You all right? I'm good. I'm good, yo. All right. Let me know. Let me know if you need something. <laughs> hey, yo. Before we start off, let me see if I could guess this quarterback. This quarterback has more passing touchdowns than Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert. He has more passing yards than Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow. And he has less interceptions than Tua, Jared Goff, and Josh Allen. Josh Dobbs. Is that it? CJ Stroud is what it is, probably, right? Oh, yeah, it's probably CJ Stroud. That's true. That's right, because he only threw he has he hasn't thrown a pick yet. All right. Is he as well? Is it him? That's what we call with CJ Stroud? That's what I'm saying. Six, t- six touchdowns, no picks. More pat more passing touchdowns than Mahomes, Burrow, and Herbert. Six touchdowns. CJ Stroud. Russell Wilson, actually. <laughs> oh wow. And they suck. We'll get to them when we talk about the Broncos uh, when we make our picks for this week. But mm. I just want to throw that out there, start it out there. It really hasn't been all on Russell Wilson this season. Just throwing it out there. When we talk about that Jets-Broncos matchup, I'm going to throw a stat out there, too, that I'll let you know it's not really on Russell Wilson. But Caleb Williams, it is rumored. Chris asked me, I did my research, it is rumored to be believed that Caleb Williams has said, he is going to stay in college unless these five teams draft him. Cowboys, Raiders, Vikings, Giants, or the 49ers. Should more top-tier prospects take this approach? Is this arrogant or is it smart? I mean, I feel like it's just a mix of both. Because, I mean, he knows he's very good. So... And he also knows that he has another year of eligibility. So all these teams trying to tank for him and knowing that they're those are bad situations. Like Carolina, Bryce Young, that's a bad situation. So I'm sure he doesn't want to end up in something like that where he's going to waste four years of his career, possibly. And it's very arrogant, but I, I can't knock him for it. Because, I mean, Eli did it in the past. And it kind of worked out for him if we look at it. So, I agree. I, th- I think it's very arrogant. And I think it's bad for the sport. Like, I, I get you're you're extremely talented, and I get that you don't want to go to a bad situation, but, like, that's how it is. That's how the NFL is currently constructed. You know, the, the worst team gets the first pick in the draft. And, like, I think his dad mentioned something about the fact that, like, oh, you know, Baker Mayfield ended up in a bad situation and that's why, you know, his career started off so bad. And, um, you know, there was another player that he he mentioned as well. And, you know, that's not necessarily the case of why Baker Mayfield didn't do well in, in Cleveland, right? There was a lot of issues in Cleveland um, that Baker Mayfield contributed to. And, and even when he had the pieces around him, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham, you know, and Joku, you know, it's not necessarily – just the situation at hand, right? But for for Caleb Williams, yes, money's involved. Yeah, you're getting paid a lot in, in college, but um, it's a gamble. If you stay, nothing's guaranteed, right? You know, you could end up with the same team that was going to draft you this year, be in the same position next year, and be ready to draft you once again, you know, because the quarterback that they draft this year may not work out. Um, you know, you, you just don't know. There's too many variables, right? So um, I think it's, it's a big risk. He's also – no one's knocking him for going back to school if you have the eligibility, right? It's not like he's doing anything to to get more eligibility or anything like that. Um, but there's injury aspects, you know, this is this is legendary money here. You know, you're talking about Bryce Young got 38 million uh for being the first round pick this year. And, you know, he's gonna be in a position next year where where he can do that and and secure a bag for the future. Um, but it, it's I don't know, man. I, I don't like it personally because I think it's bad for the sport. What do you think, Greg? I think he's smart. I think he's doing the right thing. But I mean, there are so many examples of quarterbacks going to bad situations and it literally cutting their career short. Uh, you know, Andrew Luck comes to mind. Andrew Luck had a lot of success, but he literally 
cut his career short because he the, the beating he was taking to play behind that offensive line of, of, over in Indianapolis for all those years. And there's a lot of other examples of that. I mean, there are guys who've gone to situations and flamed out because they were in the wrong situation. And a lot of talented quarterbacks that we think now we look back on and we say they suck because they played in horrible situations. Um, so I think it's just for a quarterback in particular, specifically a quarterback, more so than any other position in sports, it matters where you go. It matters the culture of where you go. It matters what, what player is going to be around you, who you're throwing a ball to, who's protecting you, you know, everything. Who's coaching you? Who's coaching you is probably the most important thing. There's no sport that where coaching is more important than in football. None. No the Coaches dictate so much more of the game flow in, in, in football than you do in any, any other sport. So for Caleb, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense for him to do that. Um, right now, you look at, like, even Kyler Murray is a good example, in my opinion. I mean, I know he had some success early in Arizona, but look how fast that's gone to waste and how fast they're going to go turn to a situation where they're going to rebuild and get off of him. And sure, I'm not saying he has to contribute to that. I'm not, I mean, he played Kakao duty till he until he couldn't see straight. I mean, and that, he that, that was the other individual that his father had mentioned, Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield. But to your point, like, Kyler Murray was a big part of that problem. Yeah, but the, it's but situ either either way you can there are so many examples you can go to. Kyle Murray and Baker, with notwithstanding, those may not be the best ones, but there are other. Andrew Luck's a great one. It's a great example of a guy who was super talented, did his thing, all pro, all world for talent, and left the game. Literally left the game because like I'm sick and tired of getting beat up. Barry Sanders walked away, sick and tired of getting beat up behind battle lines, having to make guys miss all the time. It was ridiculous. There was no kind of competency around those guys at all. And you look at Daniel Jones a lot differently if you if you felt like he was half good. It's his situation is he's running for his life over there too. Granted, he has his problems. We'll talk about it. We'll we'll get there. But the offense, what the Giants have done, they let that guy down since they drafted him. He was, he was not the most talented quarterback in that draft class. Obviously, Kyle Murray was. They took him, and they let him down by never supporting that guy ever. His best uh, weapon was Saquon Barkley the entire time he's been here, and there, there's been nothing else around him. Literally, Sterling Shepard might have been the most consistent receiver he's had, and that guy's always hurt. So situation matters, no matter what organization you go to, right? The Giants are just now starting to get a semblance of what they might be in the future, and even now looks ugly. So – situation really matters. Caleb Williams calling that calling teams bluff and saying, yo, I got all this NIL money. Um, I'm I'm not going to enter the draft this year. You know, if, if I'm not going to the right situation and I feel like it's best for me, you be a little, be a little selfish. It's, it's your career. It's your career, man. If, they, if it gets off to a bad start, they're going to blame you and then kick you to the curb. And no one's going to remember that you were great in college. They don't remember what you did in the NFL and that you flamed out. And there's already a, 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 stare, a stigma about USC quarterbacks not doing well in the NFL. It's, it's already there. So it's already set up. If you don't do well, they're going to literally throw dirt on your name. Do what's best for you. It makes the most sense. He has leverage with the NIL money. That's what it's there for. That's, that's what it's there for. You're utilizing the system to benefit you. And when all, in a system where the NFL teams usually win, usually get what they want, I have no problem with a player doing what he needs to do to make sure he goes to the right situation when there's so much evidence of guys getting screwed by being in bad situations, particularly quarterbacks. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and, and I agree with you that situation matters, but I also think like, if he starts to do this, other people that aren't as good as Caleb Williams are going to think that they're going to be able to do that as well. And that's when it sets a bad precedent for the sport. When, when you got people like Spencer Rattler, you know, thinking that they can be like Caleb Williams and try to choose where they want to go and whatnot. Like it's going to get sticky like that. Um, and it's, I don't know. I feel like there's just going to be a lot of drama around it because at the end of the day, look, look at Joe Burrow. You think, I know Joe Burrow wanted to stay in Ohio and he wanted to go to the Bengals, but like, let's say he didn't want to go to the Bengals. And, you know, we were in the same situation that, you know, the Cardinals were in. We were a very crappy team, very crappy old line, still got a crappy old line for the most part. And like Joe Burrow has had success there. Right. So it really kind of depends on, on, and we built around Joe Burrow in terms of getting him pieces that he needs. It also speaks to, you gotta, you gotta organizations only know, you know, kind of what they've been through. Right. And like, if you get a player like Kale Williams, Who's to say an organization won't change their way and and get pieces for Kale Williams to put him in a position to be successful? You can't just base it off of what they're currently doing now. I don't know. All you have is but you all you have is the history of the organization to go off of, though. All right. The Bears have sucked my entire life. Uh, they've sucked my entire life <laughs> out of one year with Rex Grossman. So yeah, I don't want to go play for the Bears. Like, you know, the Colts were up with Peyton Manning and it's been bad since then. And they and they're gonna fix it. They're they're on their way with Richardson and Steichen, but it's 
you you got to do what's best for you. Like you really do. And as far as the Spencer Rattler and all those guys, other that you know other guys doing who are less qualified, like and how it sets a bad precedent for the for the sport. Look, if a guy like Spencer Rattler decides he doesn't want to play for a certain team, he's just not going to play in the NFL. He's he's hanging on by a thread to begin with. He's not that good. You know what? So like, I don't think teams are worried about that. It's about how good you are. How good are you? And how, what is you, what is your value? If you misplay your leverage, you don't, and you think you have leverage, leverage that you don't have, then what? Teams are gonna teams are either going to draft you or they're not going to draft you. You're going to fall, and you're not going to get any money out of this whole process in the draft because we all know it's all based on where you get drafted, how much money you get. So, you know, you can play yourself, and guys will play themselves. Guys will try it. And they'll get played. It, you know, it's the story as old as time. But great players. And Shador is not, I mean, Shador is, you know, this is true. he's not much different. His dad said no because he wants to bring him back because him and Travis are a package deal. I know it's a little bit different, but it's not. Like, he has NL, NIL money and he's and he's rich to sit on. I can exercise my leverage and not go to the NFL draft. I don't need I don't need to do that. I don't, I don't need to. So I, he could easily be the second quarterback pick or the third quarterback pick. You know what I mean? It's, so I don't know. I think, I think as good as, I think it's about, you got to look at it on a case by case scenario. If someone who's not that good does it, who cares? You know, you know damn well they're going to end up where they're going to end up and they're going to be happy about it. But Caleb Williams is that good and we all know he's that good. It, it, you don't have to question it. We all know. No matter how you feel about him, you may think he's okay. You may think he's overrated. You know he's good. You know he's special. You watch him play, you know he's it. So, you know, like I think he's just exercising his, his leverage. I think it's smart. Staying in the quarterback conversation, going to the NFL. Obviously, this is probably the most important position in all of professional sports. The Lions have scored 20-plus points in 13 straight games. That is the longest active streak in the NFL. The Bengals are only averaging 12.3 points per game. Joe Burrow in the last game in a loss of 27-3. 20 of 30, 165 yards, zero touchdowns on the season. 87 for 151, 728 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, with a passer rating of 69.1 and a QBR of 33.6. Should the Bengals, obviously because Burrow is not healthy, should they consider sending him out maybe for the next two weeks, probably go one and one? They got Arizona and Seattle next, and then their bye week. Can't. They can't sit him out. Like is it, they're too far gone at this point. Like if you sit him out, then you might as well rest him for those the gauntlet coming after the bye because then the season's over. Um, and it, it sucks because the Bengals had so much promise coming into the season, and the season's not over yet. But like it all rests on the quarterback. Like every team, it rests on your quarterback. And Joe's not playing well, and I think that's mainly to do with the injury that he's dealing with, which. It's not, it's not allowing him to be what we've seen the first three years of his career, which is arguably second best quarterback in the NFL. So you got a lot of doubters right now and people are down on Joe, but I mean, the Bengals, they, they got their core. They got the core guys. They got Jamar, Joe, other Joe Mixon, you know, it wouldn't hurt to just tank the season. Even though, like, good teams don't do that, but, like, look at the Warriors when all those guys got hurt and they had to sit guys out and look what happened. They, I mean, all right, that's a bad comparison because they drafted Wiseman, but, like, they were in a good position <laughs> to draft well. Like, they were in a good position to, you know, get deeper in some some places, whether it's tackle, places on defense, you name it. So, it could be a blessing in disguise with this whole injury. And then if they do sit him out and then bring him back later in the season, yeah, you'll have a better draft pick and you're, you're able to build the stability of the team down the line, which is what you want. But like teams with higher aspirations, you kind of, <laughs> you hesitate on doing that, but you don't want Joe Burrow to go out there and mess it up even more. So yeah, I look. I I hear your point about tanking and getting a higher draft pick. The problem with that is you lose people in free agency too, right? So you you got to take your shots while you can. And if you feel like you have a championship team now, you you, you got to play Joe Burrow. the The decision to not play Joe Burrow has already passed. Joe Burrow starting this week. He's going to continue to play. 
Um, there's been no setbacks. He feels like it's getting stronger. That's all you can ask for. The the problem with with Joe Burrow right now and why he doesn't look like himself is because he's he's limited and he can't extend plays like he normally does outside of the pocket, which he did really well. You know, he there was Joe Burrow before this injury was getting the ball quickly out of his hands at a very high rate. And if he didn't see something there, he would tuck it and run. And he can't do that now, you know, and with the offensive line issues and having the defense blown up in his face, you know, from the second he gets the ball, it, it's been a struggle. You know, his clock's already sped up and he's definitely thinking about the the leg when he's playing. He can't plant off the, the back foot as well as he used to. Um, it's a problem all the way around. And I think a, a big part of the issue is the scheme. You know, teams know the the offense is limited, right? They, they know that Joe Burrow can't push and drive the ball downfield. So they're sitting over the top and just – allowing things to happen underneath and and from a scheme standpoint like the play calling just got to be better you got to get more creative you can't run a million screens to jamar chase and slant routes to tyler boyd and expect to continue to move the ball downfield all game long because teams are just sending the blitz and, and joe burrow's getting sacked and it, it's just not good right now it's not good football and if you look at this team and you know you want to point out one thing that's wrong you know there's a handful of other things that you can point out that's wrong. You know, just in the game with the Texans, uh, the, the Titans the other day, the, the defense couldn't get a stop. They couldn't get a stop. They couldn't get off the field. Coming out of the third quarter, uh, the Titans had the ball for the first 10 minutes. The Bengals didn't get the ball in the third quarter until five minutes left in, in the half. Like, that's unacceptable. You know what I mean? You, you can't allow players that have been playing crappy all season to have their best game against you. Derrick Henry looked like an MVP candidate again. Ryan Tannehill had his best game. DeAndre Hopkins had his best game all season. And it's like when, when teams are pegging you as a championship team and, you know, to to get make a deep run in the playoffs, like you just can't allow those those miscues to happen, especially when you already got the season off to a bad start. So um, they got to figure it out, man. They're they're playing Arizona, who's been playing hard all, all year. And I think um, they're going to come in with a chip on their shoulder. But it definitely starts with the play calling. Knowing that Joe Burrow is limited, how do you get chased the ball? Knowing that T. Higgins is, is – has a broken rib now and may not play. Hurdy's pushing a play, but who knows how it's going to go. But you got to find, you know, a way to get your playmakers the ball. And you got to really find ways to take a lot off of Joe Burrow's plate, knowing how limited he is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say you're not going to, I don't know if you're going to go with Tony. I, I thought I saw you. About yeah, to say you went. So Chris's point, the offense is super predictable. Because as of the last two weeks, 94% of their plays are from shotgun. And that, that's another thing, man. Joe, Joe Burrow has said that it, or in the past, he said he doesn't feel comfortable going under center, right? And that's because the offensive line has been historically bad. You know, we don't – the Bengals don't do any play action. You know how crazy that is to not do any play action and to do everything out of shotgun? It's way too predictable. You look at all these other teams doing crossing routes way down the field, post routes, you know, seven routes, corners. The Bengals don't do any of that, man, any of that. It's all underneath. It's it's super frustrating to watch, but I digress. It's frustrating not because he's hurt. You know, I think it's that simple. He's, he's hurt. He's not his best self. He can't drive the football. And he can't run, and teams know it. So you're limited. You know, I, I'll be honest. I have a hard time feeling bad when – you know, in my situation, you know, my quarterback's fully healthy and they play Daniel Jones the same way they play Joe Burrow and we don't score points. Could be worse. You know, when the guy's healthy, he'll, 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 you know, you guys make plays, you got, but the biggest thing for the Bengals is his health. And if he's going to pop an Achilles doing this and risky, risking his body, because a calf injury is not a far cry away from that. That's the primary concern. He said he felt good. I heard him say something like that today. I think I read that. So hopefully he's on the up and up and you'll start to see, you know, him take shots on the field of Jamar Chase. And the Jamar Chase thing, this this whole pro- – I, I hate number one wide receivers. I, th- I think it is so – I think it is so emblematic of the problem with sports today, how this guy comes out and says, I'm always open. I'm always – effing open and he says it after the game and all this stuff like yo your quarterback has it's playing on one leg shut up like your quarterback no, but to his to up. his point to his point the media spun that 
They just played oh. that clip, and that clip went viral. They didn't show the whole question. They didn't show the question before yeah. with him laughing, talking about how Joe Burrow is still himself. He's getting better. They didn't show him praising Joe Burrow. They just showed the frustrating moment. You know what I mean? That's why, That's why. like, I, I get so tight when I see that stuff because it's like you, – you, you're trying to divide the team at that point. You know what I mean? You're taking something that he said out of context and, and making it go viral when the sentence he said before that was literally him talking about how, you know, Joe Burrow's Joe. You know what I mean? You know, he's going through some adversity right now. He's going to get back. That, that was like paraphrasing what he said. He, he There's no animosity there. And like, yeah, he's frustrated, but like he's not frustrated to the point where, you know, you're going to start calling the Bengals, seeing if he's available. No, I, I, that's good for clarity. Like I said, you can always count on Chris for Bengals news and information. Because I, I just thought that he said that, and I was just like, "Yo, this is ridiculous! It's ridiculous!" But no, Perfect. yeah, I'm about to help. Position. He was third on the list of quarterbacks to mention. You know, with this conversation, because this past week you could see quarterback play obviously was important yet again. Dag near every week, but it kind of stuck out a lot this week. Daniel Jones specifically, 27 to 34, 203, two interceptions, two fumbles, only one loss. On the season, he has 90 out of 131 pass attempts, 765 yards, two touchdowns, six interceptions, 22 sacks with a 69.7 passer rating. Is this Daniel Jones's last year as a starter for the New York football Giants? No. Right? He's going to be the starter next year, too. I don't think there's going to be any change. But like I was reading earlier, there's an out. That's what uh, – what's the GM's name? Shane. Shane. Um, yeah. He set it up as a two-year deal, basically, that, yeah, he's a bridge quarterback at this point. If he's not playing well, he's a bridge quarterback. If he is, then you got it on a, a steal. When you're looking at the other contracts in the NFL. Um, but yeah, like he's got to be the starting quarterback next year just to be able to field a team. And you can't just, you know, find starting quarterbacks off the street. So, um, and that would be too much dead money if you were to just move on from him next year and just have him be a backup. So yeah, he'll be the starting quarterback next year. It's just who, who do you look at next year in the draft? Because I think now, the more games they lose, the higher they move up in the draft. And now you start to look at, all right, do we like Drake May? Do we, you know, can we get high enough to get Caleb from USC? Um, yeah, maybe even Shador. I mean, if he ends up coming out, all these things are on display for the Giants to look at because the current product is not good. And there's a lot of factors. The O-line is probably the worst in the NFL. Guys are not healthy. Saquon probably needs to be traded at the trade deadline if you want to, you know, maximize his value while he still has some. Um, and then the defense is kind of underwhelmed. Like the D-line hasn't been as strong. There's a lot of factors with the Giants that I, I've seen. But, um, yeah, the thing that everybody looks at is the quarterback. And Monday night was hard to watch. and. Yeah, some of those sacks weren't on him, but then, again, he was holding the ball a lot. And some of those decisions that he's making where he's missing guys downfield or he's sailing interceptions, but like the pick six, that was just bad. Like that was – I was rooting for them to come back because I'm like, all right, it's 14-3. They're driving down the field, quick plays, not, you know, taking a huddle. It's no huddle all the way down, and all of a sudden he throws it right to the Seahawks rookie cornerback who takes it back to the crib. And then I was like, all right, game's over at this point. Like there was some life there and it's gone now. The the, the question is, is he going to be the starter next year? Not that's that is that is not a guarantee in my opinion. I think it depends on how the season goes. If they're bad enough to get Caleb Williams or Drake May, I think if you draft a quarterback that high, he's going to sit, even if he is getting paid $40 million, I think Shane will look to trade him and move him. I think there are quarterbacks playing in the NFL right now that 
to be fair, are worse than Daniel Jones. I don't, I don't think Daniel Jones is bad. I haven't changed my tune. I don't think he's a, I think he's an average quarterback. I think he's like, he's, he's, he's good. Like if in a good situation, if you guys run an offense and you have a great O line and you have a great running, you have a great running back and you have great receivers and everything's good. He can, he can operate an offense. We've seen Tannehill do it. Um, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, we've seen Tannehill, we've seen Purdy, Purdy's doing that and and with the 49ers. So, you know, I think that that's the situation we're looking at right now with this. Like, it, it depends on how bad the Giants are. And honestly, I, like I said, they last week I said if they lost this game to Seattle, they would be a team that didn't even win six games. So you're we're headed towards a season right now where you're looking at it. I think it's a three win season. I think it's a three win season. I don't. I don't think you can beat LA, the LA Rams, uh, or the Commanders. The Commanders dropped thirty one on the Eagles and nearly beat them. Had had Philly fans about to take a dump on themselves because they were scared they're going to lose that game. I so, to tell you about Washington, too. So, they're, not, they're, not, they're no joke. Regardless. Keep going, keep going, my bad. Regard, well, regardless. No, but no, you're right. But regardless, um, you know, you're not beating the commanders right now. You're not beating them. You're not beating any of these teams you have slated in front of you. And nobody has any reason to have any faith in you as, a, as an organization right now in terms of just getting wins. No one, there's no reason. They've looked, they looked horrible. They've looked terrible to this point. But the Daniel Jones thing, um, the criticism he's getting is completely fair. It's completely fair. I've been one of his biggest defenders um, to this point. He showed he showed uh, pro- progress last year. But there's some things that stand out to me about Daniel Jones that weren't as prevalent last year and even in previous years, honestly. But that he's a half field read quarterback. He doesn't read the entire field. He doesn't throw the ball to the to the far side of the field at all. He like if he there's he just never gets to his last read, and it's he doesn't go through his reads quickly enough. And then on top of that, there are opportunities for big plays. They're there. Like there, any other quarterback, a good quarterback that's playing for the Giants right now is going to make a bunch of big plays on this team. They are there to be had because they scheme guys open. They just do. They're there, and he doesn't make them. He missed Wando Robinson open when he rolled out the right in the mid, in the, like in the second quarter of that game. The sack, the sack fumble was all his fault because if he if he sees it, if he if he can see it, he can get snap his head around fast enough. Wando's right open and flat. Just throw it out there. Throw it hot. You're good. You're not going to get hit from behind. He had Jalen Hyde on his, on a splash play, they, uh, and he threw the ball short to uh, to um Wandell Robinson. And without getting in all the details and boring people, it's as simple as this. He. He leaves yards on the field way too much. He just does. He doesn't throw it into anticipation. He throws it right to the receiver's chest almost every time. You know, it's the same problem. He's regressed in year five. And you can say he's gun shot. He's been getting hit a ton. But you're getting hit a ton because you're looking to run and bail out of, out of pocket instead of resetting, resetting pockets. He doesn't reset the pocket. He bails out of the pocket. And here we are. Here we are. We're in a situation now where your play is negatively negatively affecting the team. And we can't point at other people. We can't point at receivers. We can't point at the alignment sucks, sure, but they always have. You know, and if I'd had anybody else here, if Joe Burrow, the quarterback of the Giants, and he's healthy, we're gonna hit some big plays. If if you know if Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback of the Giants, we're gonna hit some big plays. There are guys out there who are gonna make plays under, under these circumstances. It's not that bad. It's bad, but he makes you look way worse because he's just not that good. You know, he's 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 just a middling quarterback. And you got to chalk it up to that when you're wrong. I mean, I was wrong. I I, th- I thought he could ascend with Brian Dayball coaching him. Uh, you know, Brian Dayball did a, did a great job last year. But even last year, he was a half field read quarterback. He was a half field read quarterback last year. That's the reality of it. And no, I'd rather I would not rather have Kirk. I don't want to go from average to average. That makes no sense. I would. Chris asked if I'd rather have Kirk in the chat. I would no. I I'm not going from average to average. If I'm going to endure average for years, then this is the way it goes out. This is the way he goes out. Right now, Daniel Jones is the quarterback of the Giants. The Giants are probably going to win three or four games this year. You draft a quarterback, and you play that quarterback. If you think he's better, you play him right away. That's it. You don't. The answer isn't playing Tyrod Taylor. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't cut his legs off in the middle of the season. You just paid him forty million dollars. You let him play the entire year because Tyrod ain't doing nothing. In, I don't, I, I don't believe in Tyrod Taylor. I've seen him. I've seen this movie a million times before. It's the worst rerun ever. Okay, he did it. He was the Browns. He was. It didn't work out. Baker took his job. He he gets his job taken everywhere. You know. So, I I ain't. I'm not looking for that. But the reality is, is that Daniel Jones finished up the season. If they can't, if he can't, if they can't get the wheels back on the track for this season, then you're going to be drafting a quarterback who will play over him next year. Bottom line, and you're looking to trade him. That's just the way it goes. The Giants, in no way, should be looking to stick with Daniel Jones if he doesn't show massive improvement in the areas I just said. 
throwing the ball to the other far half of the field, taking advantage of that. Yo, defenses literally don't guard a side of the field. If you watch the corner on the on the furthest side of the field, away from the play side, just bails and lets whoever has the, the far out or the on the, the sideline, opposite sideline, they're gonna be open every time. And he the, he never throws it. He he looks at it and doesn't throw it. So yeah, my frustration levels reach a, a, a fever pitch with him and, and quite frankly with the organization, but really with him. Cause I know that I know that Joe Shane and Brian Dable are the right guys to the job. And no, no way should they be getting looked at to be fired or move, don't don't even talk to me about that. But you want to talk about Daniel Jones? Yeah, that's free game. I think that this is probably his last year because I don't see them turning this thing around. Now, looking at the other locker room in the same arena over at Jet Life Stadium, Zach Wilson. Outplayed. <laughs> Outplayed Patrick Mahomes is probably the first time ever in Patrick Mahomes' career. He had more passing yards, more completions, more touchdowns, and a higher passer rating than Patrick Mahomes. 28 of 39, 245 yards, two touchdowns. Zach, Will Zach Wilson's performance. With this performance, is this a situation where you keep hope alive for Zach Wilson and the Jets season in general? You know, they brought Trevor Sitting in. They've been talking about bringing cap bringing tony romo after this game <laughs> what does this do for the rest of the season for the jets i mean it's, it's like a, i don't like the whole moral victory thing because it's just like it's still lost like i would have liked to win that game i think we had a good shot at winning that game as the game progressed um and yeah if he can play like that for the rest of the season then the the season's looking up again. Like, if he plays like he did the past two games before that, then no, I would say no. But there was something different that you just saw in his game on – I don't know if it was them taking the training wheels off and finally letting him try to make plays and throw it downfield and not trying to, like, handcuff him. Because the kid is – he was the second overall pick, like – you can knock guys that are taken too high, yeah, whatever. Like, the talent is there. Like, he wasn't just some guy who came out of the blue to be the second overall pick. Like, the talent is there. It's just – it's taken him a while to, you know, realize that talent. Um, it took him this long. Um, so he's got another good chance to show against the Broncos that this can be st sustainable because, like, the Broncos' defense isn't that good. Like, you know, oh, we points, want to talk about it. 70 points is, you know, I'm surprised they didn't have those sheets of paper like Will in the locker room for the Dolphins because I would have. Um, but, yeah, Zach, Zach is – I'm a lot more optimistic about the season at one and three, nonetheless, than I was the week before coming off of that Patriots game where I'm just like, all right, he's regressed. He's gun shy. He's afraid to – make plays down the field. Like, you're the quarterback. Take the reins. And I think he did that against a good Kansas City defense, which, like, that first quarter, yeah, he struggled a little bit, but then he got in his rhythm and he stayed in that rhythm. I think if he doesn't fumble that ball at midfield in the fourth quarter, we probably win that game. But, um, yeah, I think if we can get to – the bye, two and four at least, because we play the Eagles after the Broncos. This is a must win. And then the Eagles game, I mean, it's a toss up. I mean, they've been playing close games with a lot of teams. So I'm not expecting a blowout. But at the same time, I'm not expecting like a win. That's icing on the cake if they can beat the Eagles. But um, I'm more optimistic about the season and how it's going to look than I was previously. I think I think I think you hit on a lot of things, man. There's there's definitely a lot to like in what Zach Wilson did the other day. Um, the main problem before was he he was playing not not to he wasn't playing to win. You know what I mean? He was playing not to turn the ball over, and and you can't win like that. You're playing scared. You're you're playing with no confidence. And um, I, I think like you said, they cut him loose this week, and they know against a Kansas City 
team that typically scores a lot of points. I mean, they didn't this past week, but a team that typically is on fire on offense, you, you got to take your chances and you got to try to win. And and he looked good doing it. And I think he's comfortable in the offense, having been in it the the past what is it three years now? This is year three for him. The, the past three years, and um, he's definitely building some rapport with those receivers. Garrett Wilson, um, you know, Lazard, Uzama. He, he, he's definitely getting comfortable, and I think he's getting his confidence back. But it's, it's rough, man, when you're in his position and the expectations were so high because you had Aaron Rodgers and everyone is talking about how bad you are just because you're not playing up to the standards that Aaron Rodgers potentially would have. That's That's tough from a confidence standpoint, especially when – Someone was brought in to take your job, and and last year didn't go so hot either in terms of getting benched. You know, he he came into the season with with very little confidence, and then to have the season start the way it did, it, kudos to him for for kind of bouncing back. Again, no moral victories, but he looks like he he's taking it well, and and the maturity's there. Uh, yeah, I, I disagree with the moral victory thing. I mean, yeah, you take you take victories how you can get them when you're in a situation that bad. The guy wasn't playing well. He looked. He didn't look like an NFL quarterback for most of his career, and last weekend he played great. He he just played great. I mean, he, he that was the best he's ever looked. So the Jets fans have to take that and run with it. Like your expectations have to adjust. The second that the dude that Aaron Rodgers went out, your your season was never gonna be. Your season was never gonna be what you thought it was gonna be. So when Zach Wilson goes out there and has a good game. And looks like it looks and flashes potential. No, nah, man, it is a win because you weren't beating the Chiefs anyways. You didn't expect to be the Chiefs. That wasn't realistic. So if he can go out there and replicate, replicate that performance over and over again, you may have something there, and you don't have to. Maybe you don't have to go draft a quarterback when it's all said and done. Maybe you don't have to look at because you know Rodgers probably got one or two years left. You know, no matter what he tells you, no matter you know if he tells you he's superhuman or not, you know he seems to think he is. But it, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference. I I just. That's that's a good. That was a good sign. He did a great job, and he showed some mental toughness because everyone's looking to take a dump on him. And it's what Rodney Harrison did on TV was dead wrong, you know. But I don't expect better from him. He's always been kind of trashy to me, just a trashy type of human being. I always kind of get a bad vibe from him. And maybe it's because he played for the Patriots. I don't know, but I don't expect a good thing from someone like him. I just don't. What he did was complete garbage. I I, I, I was that was so so wrong. Um, but you know. Um, I, I I digress. I digress. You know, I think that ultimately it's it's just more about it's more it's more about the performance from Zach Wilson. If you can replicate that, you have a good chance. You have a, you have a good chance to to win some games on the stretch here and not be awful. And maybe you can hold the four together when until Aaron Rodgers comes back on one leg, since he seems to think he's Jesus or something like that. He's not coming back this year. It's... Well, he thinks he's Jesus. He does. He's he's crazy. Forty year old quarterback coming back in four months is unrealistic. He's, he's out of his mind. He's out of his mind. He's an anti-vax conspiracy theorist. Uh, just, just nut. He's a nut. He's out of his mind. He, he's crazy. He said four months. He said he's out of the boot. He was in the boot for thirteen weeks. He's out of it now. And he's talking about coming back. That guy is out of his mind. Thank God he's good at football. I, I, I am so scared for society to see what he's going to do next when football is over. I am so scared. We think Brett Favre is bad. You, it could, it, uh, no. it's going. I know that is where we're headed. It, it, you think we're, headed. we're not heading that far down there? Oh uh, no, I, I'm scared. I'm scared of where he's headed, bro. I'm scared of who he's going to be standing next to down the line. He's going to be standing standing next to fake Stan Van Gundy that we saw in that damn clip. He'll be he, in the dark, huh? He'll be underground. He'll be in the dark. No, that's not, no. He won't. We wish he won't be. He's going to be. He's going to be affecting the youth, talking, affect you know, affect polluting minds, running some kind of like weird cult. That is that is where we're headed with that guy. He is a weirdo for real. He said, "I believe in prayer." Who are you praying to? Actually, I, I would love to know. He can't tell you that. He can't. <laughs> he can't tell you that. He probably he is too, yo. Actually, he probably on the the Kyrie wave. All yes, the yes, he is, and he reminds me so much of Kyrie. I mean, it's 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 crazy. We haven't gotten to basketball yet, and I. <laughs> oh, we about we about to get to it eventually. But before we get there, uh, you mentioned the conspiracy theories. I'm not. A conspiracy theorist and i'm not going you know do what everybody was doing on twitter and you know what sauce kind of tweeted and then deleted about the swifties and you know that affecting the game no i'm not gonna say it affect the game but nfl could y'all please stop with the notifications about taylor swift this stop is it. this is getting disgusting it's respectable people like adam schefter tweeting oh taylor swift is gonna be at the game and she's gonna be wearing red 
stop. This is getting, can I get my football back? This is disgusting. I get it. The business side of it, you're getting people that's never watched the game ever because Taylor Swift is at the game. This was the most viewed game, they said, since like Super Bowl 57. I get it. But it's curtains. Like, y'all got to stop doing that. CJ Shroud has been balling this year. Real quick, who would you rather CJ Shroud? CJ Shroud or Kirk Cousins? CJ Shroud. It's a wow. tough one. No, it's it's tough. Tough. <laughs> CJ Shroud. CJ Shroud, bro. CJ Shroud or Jared Goff? CJ Shroud. CJ Shroud or Dak Prescott? CJ Shroud. Ooh. I'm gonna, go, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go Dak. I'm gonna go Dak out of respect, just because I haven't seen we. Yo, it's easy to say C.J. Stroud now, based on on what we've seen through the first four weeks of the season. Two more. There's much more talent to throw the football than him. I, I'm going C.J. Stroud. That's just me. C.J. Stroud, Justin Fields. Oh, Ooh. C.J. Stroud. C.J. C.J. Last one, the person that used to have that position it used to be the starter, CJ Shroud or Deshaun Watson. Right now, CJ Shroud. Right now, yeah. Yeah, I'm I agree with that. Deshaun has CJ has CJ Stroud played an elite defense yet? He just played the Steelers. Yeah. The Steelers are elite. I mean he tore them up. He, he, he tore them up. Awesome. Yeah, because the secondary is off. Yo, to, to me, the actually, let me before we yo, and I don't even. It's funny. I'm pressed. For, I'm pressed for time, but I, I'll just say this: CD, CD Stroud is a great example of what I'm talking about with Daniel Jones. CD Stroud's offensive line, there was there was non-existent. He took did he how many sacks did he take against the Steelers? I think he might have taken like one or two. It was it was very few sacks. The two two sacks. He throws the ball with anticipation. Does everything I say that Daniel Jones doesn't. He's the antithesis of Daniel Jones. He's the exact opposite in every way. He's better than him already. That guy is so far ahead. My bad. He didn't take one sack against. He didn't team. take any sacks against the Steelers, yo. The TJ Watt didn't touch him, and literally, like, I, I, the entire line was out. I, I don't. Maybe Tunsil played. Everybody else was out. Their their Kent the Green their 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 first round pick from last year it was out. That yo, that guy is incredible. He's incredible. So, yeah, don't talk to me about Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins. I think he – Tone was nice. Tone just named some low-tier quarterbacks. He could have named some high-tier quarterbacks. i take over – I'd take C.D. Shot over, too. So, you know, just keep Justin that – Herbert. No, Justin Herbert. No, Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert. I'm taking Herbert. That's not That's not the one you want to try. And Herbert's like Tua. that. Tua took a lower. C.D. Yeah. Stroud. Funny enough, funny enough. I had two on the list, but I was like, I don't want to do two. I didn't expect that answer. So. I, I take Stroud. Stroud's bigger, can can contest every part of the field, and he throws in anticipation already. He already exhibits a lot of the features that that Tua has. You know what I mean? He's already so so. And when you're bigger and stronger, you can contest every part of the field with your arm. It gives you an advantage over a guy like Tua because Tua is limited with the arm strength. There's specific throws you have to get Tua to throw. Tua is limited, but he's a great. He's a damn good quarterback for what that system is over there. But they utilize him the right way. They gave him speed. Trust me, if you put Steve Shroud on that team, they'd be they'd be it'd be scary, yo. Hold on. So are you saying that he's better or you would take him over? To- I'm taking him over him. I, I you mean I you don't have to say better. Better. you don't have to say he's better. I mean, I think he's I think he's better, if I'm being honest. I think he's better than Tua. Uh that's just my personal opinion. I think he's better than Tua right now. And I think that if even if you didn't think he's better than Tua right now, with 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 potential and where his career can go and with the fact that he just got here. Uh, bank on the bank on the potential bank on where his career is headed and that alone will answer your question so i see it but i i, I take him over to it because of the arm strength thing i think it makes a big difference he can he can hit at, he can throw the ball to any part of the field there's no there's no part of the field he can't test but two we we all know to a can we know that yeah to your point the bills might have showed a little bit of a playbook of how to stop the dolphins in that powerful offense Get pressure on Tua, make him throw outside the numbers, make him throw long balls. They struggle. Granted, Tyreek Hill did get injured, but pointed out, Tua has been one of those quarterbacks that have not been touched this year. They got to him about four times, and he had two turnovers. So the Bills might have gave a little blueprint of, yo, this is how you beat the Dolphins. AFC East, we still the Kings. Josh Allen looks like himself again.
bad first game, had some brain farts, back to life, back to reality. We're going to end off the show with this. Basketball we could keep because we still got three weeks before the season starts. Preseason starts tomorrow. So if we need to push it back to next week's episode or we do a separate episode, whatever have you. Tone, before you keep going, Tone, we're supposed to be doing something this weekend. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm so, not. So, so, so we'll, we will discuss it then because I have a lot of thoughts about what happened with Dame and we will discuss it then and we'll get it out to the people. I, I that We'll talk about it then. I, I had that in mind when I said I'm limited on time. Yeah, so we start off with the week five picks. I know this might be an easy one, but we already told people that we will every week give you our picks for our teams, Giants, Miami. 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 On to the next one. University of Miami. Probably. Stands up. Jets at at Broncos. Now, before y'all give me our picks. Denver gives up the second most passing yards at 285 yards passing and the most rushing yards at 176 rushing yards. For everybody that's saying is Russell Wilson. Mm. That defense that has been top five, top ten for the last couple years is not that. So it's not all on Russ. And Sean Payton might have to wear some of this too because that defense was elite and you came, now they booty. The offense looks better, but the defense – is abysmal. Jets at Broncos. Who do y'all got? I think Zach Wilson gets loose again. This is a perfect, perfect game to play against Nets. And, and if you're saying they're giving up that many rushing yards too, you got to let Brees Hall cook. Put put Brees in and let him cook. I don't I don't know why he's not been getting carries these past few weeks, but coming off that performance he had week one, if they're if they're playing a defense like this that can't stop the run, you you got to give him more touches and let him get going. They just win the game if they can run the ball and and get to some play action and let Zach just take the same trip as last week. They should win. I, I'm a little nervous about this game because I think Wilson is is being underrated this season a little bit. And I think if the defense comes to play even a little bit, if the defense shows up, um, it's going to be a sticky game because the Jets obviously the offense can be anemic. You know, I, for me to throw house money on the Jets would be foolish based on what I've seen this season. I, I don't. I don't understand why anyone would do that. I, I'm just being honest. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I think if the, it's football. Like, if the Broncos come to play this weekend defensively, we know that Wilson's going to put some points on the board. It'll be a close game. It, it's, I think this is a toss-up game, in my opinion. I think the Jets should win it, but it's a toss-up game. That's just my personal opinion. I know that, you know, maybe Miles looking like I'm crazy because I'm not saying they're they're going to roll them. But Greg, you got to be more specific. Which Wilson are you talking about? Talking about, I said, I said Russell. You know damn well Russell. I'm talking about. I have, if you ask me which faith that would who have more faith in between Russell Wilson and Zach Wilson, come on, come on, man. Let's not get carried away. Zach, Zach played well, but it was just once. He has to do it again. He has to do it again and do it again, and you have to keep on piling him up, as you know. So we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna watch that game intently. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be locked in. But I think it's a toss up game. I look at it like a divisional game, even though, even though it's not. Next game, Bengals Cardinals. Bengals backs up against a the wall. They're on the road. You, you ain't got no choice but to win. You got to get to to three and three at the bye. You got the Seahawks right after that, so you 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 need to win here because the Seahawks is not a guarantee. Nor is this, mind you. I got the Bengals winning. Yeah, I think the Bengals. I think the Bengals should win. Y'all the game. disrespectful. <laughs> y'all wild. Disrespectful. Cardinals play really hard, man. It's not even about y'all. It's not even like that. The Car- the Bengals should win the game. Let's just put it that way. They're, they're much better, but twelve points a game, and the, and teams are doing what they do to the Giants. Take you know, just sitting on underneath routes and breaking downhill on them. That's concerning. That's concerning. So if 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 ben, if Joe Burrow looks healthy, they they should smash him. But if he's compromised, the Cardinals ain't. It's not like it's not sweet. The Card- the Cardinals aren't even trying to lose. You're like they tried to lose by putting the personality they put out in the field, but those guys are trying to win. They they play hard. They play really really hard. So much harder than the football team that I root for. They play hard like everybody does. It's admirable, honestly. So we'll see. We'll see. I think if he looks good, the the Bengals should roll. If he doesn't, it could get weird for y'all. I mean, they should be three and one. So I mean, this is this team is a lot better than. The record that they have right now, they're one and three. They lost by four to Washington 
first game, and then the Giants, that miracle on mir- – miracle in Arizona that happened. It shouldn't happen. Y'all should be all for it, but uh, I digress. I got the Cardinals, though. I got, I got the Cardinals. Look, just notice. I just want to remember, Greg. Take just remember that this guy is taking dirt and throwing it on my grave when I'm down bad. Just remember this, because I don't forget. Sh- I don't forget nothing. I don't. My memory's long. It's it's long, bro. Like it's very long. I just remember that. Just remember, I don't forget nothing. Knicks, the Jets, the Yankees. Anytime he gets a chance, he's gonna take it. So remember, my memory's long. Just remember yeah. that. Just remember. You sound like you sound like Anthony Davis. I, I heard what they've been saying. I heard what the Nuggets were saying. But I'm serious. Unlike him, he's unserious. I'm serious. <laughs> the game of the week, probably. I think nobody would disagree with this. Uh, last pick before we end this episode: Cowboys at the 49ers. Even Jerry Jones has come out and said the 49ers probably are the favorite to win the Super Bowl. This will be a measuring stick. For the Dallas Cowboys. How do y'all see this one going? 49ers. 49ers. Brock Purdy's playing at a high level right now. And he's not doing like crazy things to, to make them win. But he's not putting them in positions to lose either. You know what I mean? He, he's doing exactly what he needs to do. Call him a game manager. He protects the football, man. And he gets the ball in, into his playmaker's hands. And, and that's what you want. You know, when you play a quarterback like that who does things for his team to lose, right? Turns the ball over countless times. That's when it can become problematical. So I think uh, a problematic. Excuse me. I think uh, Brock Purdy and the 49ers are going to get rolling. The 49ers will win the game. Um, I just I think whenever the Cowboys are challenged by a team that's halfway decent or an elite team, the upper echelon teams, they they falter. And with that old line, that run game, um, they and their ability and, and the ability to stretch the field and take advantage of the middle of the field with Kittle and Debo and get those guys rolling. I, I just don't see the 49ers. De- the, the Cowboys, in theory, should be able to hang in this game and they will, but I just think the 49ers are going to win. And I don't have to give you any real analysis besides the fact that when the Cowboys play good teams, they get that they they somehow come up short and they find a way. And that's what they're going to do here. And I expect some mistakes from Dak because they're going to have to throw the ball a bit. It's not going to be a game where you can just run, 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 run and rely on the defense. You're not going to get strip uh, strip sacks and you know returns for touchdowns and pick sixes. You're not. That's not going to happen. Purdy's going to take care of the ball. He has the personnel. You know, I don't think Purdy's particularly good. I actually don't think he's good at all, in my opinion. But I think that because of the the system he's in, he he can take advantage of what Shanahan asks him to do, and that's all he has to do. Or with that all star cast around him, they pay him like three hundred thousand dollars a year. There are there are people in Silicon Valley making more money than Purdy. So. Because of that, you can build an all-star cast of players all around him, and here we are. So, yeah, he'll go out there, he'll manage the game, and he'll do what he has to do to get a win. And he'll get paid for it, too, on the back end. That that joke won't apply much longer. He's going to get paid. But, um, yeah, the 49ers will win the game. Cowboys will find a way to lose it. That's just that's hey, that's uh, Playing at a high level doesn't mean good, right? It just means doing what you need to do to get the win, and that's what he's doing. Yeah, you're, that's, that's, that's facts. That's exactly it. He plays at a high level. And you can't take that for granted because not every quarterback does. He plays very smart. Right. So maybe Joe Burrow was playing at a high level, and now he's just – this is what he is now. See? Let's end the podcast, yo. I, I, can't, I, can't I got time for us to spiral into. Two stats to end the show off with. <laughs> Hugh Stafford, this season, is first in pass attempts, second in pass completion, second in pass yards. Resulted in Puka Nakua being the first player in NFL history with 500 receive 500 plus receiving yards in his first four career games. Puka Matthew Stafford coming back rejuvenated is a pure example of if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Bench mob we out peace. Peace. Man.